that's what happens when we do... Hello, my name's Ian Gabbertese. I'm a firefighter and uh, I specialise in fire training. I bet you they didn't tell you that could happen in uh, when using a fire extinguisher. Now let's pull it apart and see what actually happened. Now that one will probably run out. Give it a test and see. Yeah, okay, come out this way. Come out this way. Oh, come back, mate. Go back, come back, come back. All commercial seafarers receive some form of fire training. Uh, a small part of that will include the use of fire extinguishers. And usually that's done in an outside environment. In the clip we're showing now, we have five litres of kerosene that's been burning for about two minutes. We can clearly see that the initial attack of the dry chemical powder is pushing uh, extra air with it, thereby fanning the flames, increasing flame height, intensity and significantly heat. In addition, after the flames have been put out, we can see a mix of colours in the smoke. So in that we have some powder, we have uh, some steam and we also have some blue tinged smoke. So, what's actually happening? Now, the, what type of gases are created is neither here nor there in the scheme of things, but it's the process that we need to look at to appreciate why that blowback happened. So any solid turned into a vapour or gas requires a huge amount of energy. So our extinguishing agent, in this case dry powder, is absorbing a lot of that heat and it's being converted into vapours and gases. That has a massive cooling effect. We also have the fact that turning a solid into a vapour creates a massive expansion of those products. So we also have the displacement of air and a few other things going on as well. So, initially we've got a negative effect using dry chemical powder in this case, but almost any extinguishing agent will be much the same. Uh, for the first second or so, we have an increase in fire activity. After that, we have a decrease in fire activity as the extinguishing agent actually becomes effective. When you're ready. <laughs> bye bye fire. Get it down on the edge, yeah. Walk around across, yeah. Well done. Good. Good work. Excellent. So there's still powder in this. The reaction we're about to see is exactly the same as what we saw in that first clip, only this time it is different. So what we can't see in that initial uh, the very first clip me being covered in smoke, was that flames came out of the door of that training prop. Um, it was a cocktail of very hot smoke and gases. And I must admit, it took me by surprise. So what happened? Well, the chemistry and the physics of what you saw is quite complex, but there's a lot going on in that very short time frame. But here is what we know. The fire is contained in a two-storey section of our training prop, uh, the only entry and exit available is that single door. Uh, basically what's happened is the fire has burned for two minutes, same as the outside tray. Heat from the fire is trapped and it's accumulating. Uh, smoke is made up of many things but carbon monoxide is the main component and the auto ignition temperature of that is around the 600 degrees Celsius mark with a flammability range of between 11 and 74 percent in round numbers. The upper level of the smoke layer is almost at its auto ignition temperature, but it's too rich to burn inside the, the structure. The hot gas smoke layer, known as the overpressure, is reaching about halfway down that door. Uh, the underpressure is allowing fresh air in to feed the fire or keep it going. The neutral plane, the area in between those two pressures, uh, is just starting to undulate. And if you know anything about firefighting, uh, we're reaching flash over stage. The injection of the dry chemical powder in this instance has forced in additional air, which has increased the flame height, intensity and heat. It's also expanded, so it's filled that space and the overpressure is now over full. It's got to be released somewhere. 
it came out of the door. Mixing with fresh air outside, at its auto ignition temperature, it's caught fire and effectively exploded. And that's what happened. That's what happens when we use...